That's some of the worst CPR I've ever seen in my life. I mean, what does this do? That's nothing. That's, that's garbage. Garbage chest compressions. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. You may be questioning what kind of environment I'm currently in. Well, as you know by my last video, I am at my family's house, and that is because I am homeless. But that doesn't stop YouTube. YouTube never sleeps. So I got my camera, I got my light, I have a roof, and I have my laptop. As you know now by the title of this video, we are going to be doing a little analysis of one of the CPR slash medical scenes of the new Outer Bank season. This is going to be season two. We're gonna go ahead and get right into it. Let's go. All right, so before we get into this episode, I have to give a quick disclaimer. What is it called when you give away, like a, not a teaser, that's the opposite. What do you call when you give it away? When you like give away the, the video. It's called a, what is it called? Spoiler alert? Yeah, spoiler, right? Okay, there we go. So just a quick disclaimer, this is a spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen season two or up to season two, episode three. Go ahead and stop the video right now if you haven't seen this episode yet or this season, because I don't want to spoil it for you. Go ahead and stop. Come back to this video later. Put a little watch later click on this video and go watch this and then come back. So I don't want to spoil it. For those of you who have seen this episode so far, you may have had the same thought I did watching it. After watching this episode, had a little issue with it. So I was like, might as well do a reaction video to it. Season two, episode three, quick backstory here. For those of you who have seen it, John B, Sarah Cameron, they are dating. They are trying to basically steal their 400 plus million dollars of gold back. In the process, Sarah Cameron gets shot in the right hip. This is kind of what happens. So let's get into it. So she was clearly shot in the right hip. She is in the Bahamas now. They're kind of not going to a real doctor because they don't want to get caught. Obviously concerned for a vascular injury. That is the main thing because you have the femoral artery and vein that run right along that right hip. Don't want those to be severed in trauma situation. So hopefully that's not the case here. She's doing a great job walking, might I add. So where do you want me to put it, Doc? Take her straight down the hallway here. So this is like right away, it looks like, like a room behind the back of a restaurant or something. Not very sterile or hospital-esque. So what do we got here? Uh, oh boy. So the fact right away that it's kind of like oozing out and not squirting out like you would expect an arterial bleed, you know, it makes me think that it's probably a femoral injury. And again, I know this is not real life, but if I saw this, I'd be like, okay, it's probably a femoral vein injury and not an artery because if it was an arterial injury, she'd have a big hematoma, she'd have blood squirting out and probably a big bleed into her leg. And she probably would have some symptoms from losing that much blood. So we'll, we'll see though. Put some pressure on that wound right here. Yes, sir. Go ahead. So somehow she has an IV started. No clue what's in that IV. I hope it's fluids because if someone's bleeding, you want to replace their volume with fluids uh, or crystalloids, colloids, your choice. So hopefully they're doing that. Maybe some pain meds mixed in there, which probably, I don't know. She's bleeding a little on the outside and she's bleeding a lot on the inside. What does that mean? It means I can go in. You're, you're gonna synthesize that, right? Good call, kid. See, yeah, that's what you want. You want just to go ahead and start cutting open that stem. If you use a scalpel like this that's not sanitized, as, I mean, this is like common sense here, but it could lead to a very bad bacterial infection, which could cause you to lose the leg or track up the rest of your body. Who the heck knows? And I love how he just sterilizes it in like water or alcohol whatever that is. So basically I'm imagining he's going to make an incision over the femoral artery and vein, see which one's bleeding, ligate or suture up the hole in the artery or vein and close her up. Sounds pretty simple, right? Even for a under the ground doctor in the back of some random room in Bahamas. I still at this point don't know, wait, why is she sitting there not saying anything? Because she would be like jumping off the table if you just started cutting into her groin and operating on her. So I don't know. Maybe they had an anesthesiologist come along, don't know, but it's very odd. Something's missing here. Okay, give me the scissors. And then give me that salty dog if you would, please. For those of you who don't know what a salty dog is, it is a cocktail. I believe it's like gin. Let me, let's look it up, hold on. Vodka or gin and grapefruit juice, and they salt the room. That's good to have, you know, before and after surgery too. That's what you want your doctor, drinking alcohol before they do surgery. That's what happens now. Wait, wait. 
See, that's weird. So they gave her, I guess they gave her like fentanyl drip or something. I'm just guessing. And then now she's out and you have to wait for her to wake up. Doesn't really make sense and doesn't really follow how normal medical things work or surgeries. So let's, let's take a peek at this uh, monitor here. So she's sat at 90%, which is not good. It's very low, especially for someone who is, she's 16 years old, by the way. She currently has normal sinus rhythm. However, it says she has zero respirations, but a saturation of 90% doesn't make sense. Normal sinus rhythm, and it also says asystole up here in the right corner, which is no pulse, which is cardiac arrest or a code, but she has a pulse. So it doesn't really, things aren't adding up here. See, that's probably true. If she's not awake because of blood loss, you would want to replace her blood volume with fluid. However, it's weird because they don't feel a pulse, even though the monitor says there is a pulse. And the monitor also says there's a systole, but if you don't see a pulse and you don't feel a pulse, you would start CPR immediately, but they don't do any of these things. So it's kind of weird. They're kind of like waiting around, not acting. It's kind of odd. So a lot of things aren't adding up here. So she has no heartbeat, he felt no heartbeat, and she's talking. Those things don't happen in real life. Everything's gonna be okay. Did you just stay with me, okay? Doc, hold on, Doc. I'm right there. Doc! Hey! You don't see VR? That's a sternum, push on. So that actually made sense. She stopped talking, the monitor was asystolic, or asystole, and there was no rhythm, which actually made sense there. The first time it didn't make sense, this time it does. Okay. Try not to break her ribs. That's, that's some of the worst CPR I've ever seen in my life. I mean, what does this do? That's nothing. You have to literally push the chest like a good five centimeters or two inches deep so you have to actually push. And for those of you who've done CPR, you realize how hard it is to push against the sternum. You have to put some force into it, like your whole body weight, and he's barely even, mm, mm. that's like nothing. That's not going to do anything. And he says, be careful not to break ribs. That's absolutely false. You should not be careful because if you're doing CPR correctly, you really have no choice but to break ribs and the sternum sometimes. Oftentimes when I've done CPR, you can feel the ribs crack under you, which is, bit unsettling, but at that point, the patient is not alive. You have no choice. It's either give appropriate chest compressions at appropriate depth and appropriate speed, or the patient remains dead. You kind of have to do whatever it takes, and sometimes you break a few ribs in the process, but if it means that their heart returns to normal rhythm, then totally worth it. That's, that's garbage. Garbage chest compressions. They waited like a good two minutes here and haven't done CPR. And he went straight to the bag valve mask, breathing. So he should have gone straight to CPR if he wants to continue this. I mean, this is like so, this is so dramatic, right? All of a sudden she just develops a pulse, even though the monitor still said asystole, by the way. She still just develops a pulse and now she's, uh, she's back to life. I really wish these TV shows would consult with like an actual physician. I mean, if they want to consult with me, I'm here. I'll tell you everything you know, make this as real as possible, but they choose not to a lot of the times and some of the stuff is just uh, a little garbage. No hate to Outer Banks, I love this show though. It's almost like she just had a nice nap. A little surgery, a nice nap, it's all good. Whoa, little lady. You need to go How long did I sleep? 
For someone to code, have their heart stop, get up off the table, grab their own IV bags, and it's like, yeah, ready to go again, walk out of there, that's not realistic at all. Seriously, Sarah, you shouldn't be standing. I'm fine. Now she's walking like nothing happened. See, this is why it doesn't make sense. I know it's TV, I know it's like dramatic and all this stuff, but it's not normal. So that's pretty much it for that episode. I just wanted to show you all the medical aspect of that and what happened to Sarah Cameron. If you haven't seen the full episode, make sure you watch it on Netflix. This video will probably get no views because a lot of people don't like this, but you know what? I thought I'd do it anyways. So smash the like, subscribe button, follow me on Instagram and TikTok if you don't already. And I'll see you all very shortly on the next video. Maybe from a new apartment. We'll see. Bye.